We'll be finished here very soon, Mr. Parker. Uh, I'm very sorry for your loss. Thank you. Valerie had been sick for a long time. I'm, I'm just glad she's finally at rest. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Chin Fat. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to use the Essential Audio Panel inside of Premiere Pro. Uh, first of all, we've got this little project here. It's just a little scene of dialogue that's been edited. Play. I'm going to play through this a little bit. We'll be finished here very soon, Mr. Parker. Uh, I'm very sorry for your loss. Thank you. And as we play through it, you can notice there's a mismatch between the audio here. There's uh, two different camera angles that were shot with a microphone pointed at a different person each time, and we had kind of different levels here, Kevin. So I'm going to start this by going to the audio um, by going to the audio layout here. And it brings up this essential uh, sound panel here. If you're not familiar with this, watch the episode previous to this one. I go through that a lot more in detail. This episode, I'm just going to be covering dialogue in the essential using the essential sound panel. So since I'm working with this, and this basically everything here in this timeline is uh, is dialogue, I'm going to define it as dialogue. I'm going to select everything here on my bottom channel. I'm going to go up and turn on dialogue. And that turns everything down in here. It's, it's treating it as if uh, this is all dialogue down here, which it is. So as we play through this here, I'm going to go through the beginning clip here. We'll be finished here very soon, Mr. Parker. I'm very sorry for your loss. Okay, and first of all, I want to mix his audio level so it's at a proper level. I'm, mixing, I'm working in a stereo environment, which means dialogue level should be probably right up around like negative 12. Uh, maybe even a little bit lower because he's being a little bit quiet here. He's talking a little quietly, so maybe a little bit below negative uh, 12. And as I play this back... We'll be finished here very soon, Mr. Parker. It hits around negative 30 is kind of where average is out. I'm very sorry for your loss. So that's probably about 18 decibels we need to increase this by if we want to get it up near negative 12. Let's go up. I'm going to select this, and I'm going to go down to clip volume, and I'm going to increase the level here. We'll be finished here very soon. And that did bring it up, but what, what I like doing more than using the one down in the essential uh, sound panel is because now the waveforms aren't, it, it, does, it did not change the waveform. It just boosted up these current levels here. If you want to redefine this at a certain level, I'm going to uncheck that. I'm going to undo that. Selecting this clip here, I'm just going to hit the letter G and bring up the gain, and I'm going to gain this by, I'm going to go not quite all the way up to 18. Let's try 15 decibels and see what that does. You notice the waveforms have now increased. We'll be finished here very soon, Mr. Parker. And that's a bit too loud, so hit G for gain, and I'll bring it down, negative maybe 3. We'll be finished here very soon, Mr. Parker. I'm very sorry for your loss. And that's better there. You notice at the beginning it gets kind of it's kind of loud and then it gets a little quieter. So I'm going to just do a little bit of ramping on this. I'm going to hold down Control or Command and I'm going to click on this and add some keyframes. And I'm going to turn it up from there to there so it gets a little bit louder. Very soon, Mr. Parker. Uh, I'm very sorry for your loss. And I like the levels on that. But now as we get, cut to the next clip here, notice it is very, very quiet. This doesn't have to be gained. This has to be gained here as well. But what I'm going to try here is I'm going to select this clip. And I'm going to move up to the top here. And I'm going to move into the essential panels here. With that clip selected, I'm going to go to loudness. I'm going to click on the loudness. I'm going to put my mouse over auto match. And it tells you what it's going to do. It says automatically match clip to a standard average loudness for dialogue. And what it tries to do is get all the audio levels up to the same uh, level here. I'm going to auto match. And look what happened. It did boost that up quite a bit. But let's listen to it and now see. And now let's listen to that and see what it sounds like. Thank you. Valerie has been sick for a long time. And that's way too loud. So I'm going to hit this. With this selected, I'm going to hit G for gain and take it down negative 6. Hit enter and get the waveform so they look about the same here. Thank you. Valerie has been sick for a long time. I'm, I'm just glad she's finally at rest. And now it's a bit louder. We do have some noise in the background, which you can clean up a bit. Uh, but I'm going to continue doing this. I'm going to go through clip to clip. I'm going to select this one. And let's try the auto match on this one as well. And it boosts it up there. And let's listen. I guess that's the way to look at things. Still. And there's really loud, so what we can do is we can do a little keyframe action here. I'm going to put a total of four keyframes just surrounding this clip right here. And I'm going to grab this middle section here and just drag it down a little bit by about maybe almost four decibels. Let's listen to that. Still. And it's still a little too loud, so I'm going to bring that down a little bit more. Still. It must have been hard to wake up. And I am going to bring down the gain on this thing by about like three decibels on the whole clip because it's still a little too loud. So I'm going to select the clip, hit G, 
negative three, enter, bring that down. I guess that's the way to look at things. Still, it must have been hard to wake up and... So I'm going to keep doing this. I'm going to go through the whole uh, timeline and I'm going to get my audio mixed to the level that I want it to. So everything's kind of conformed. Everything sounds about the same level, uh, right around negative 12 or a little bit below. I've been kind of getting the audio between negative uh, 18 and negative 12 there. And uh, I'm going to go through and finish this off and then we'll come back and show you some other steps here. Okay, now that I've got everything kind of conformed, I've got all these audio waveforms up a little bit, and I've got everything to where that sounds kind of consistent throughout, what I will do next is I'm going to go through and try to find some of these spots on these edits here and smooth those out a little bit. So I'm going to, as I play through this... We'll be finished here very soon, Mr. Parker. Uh, I'm very sorry for your loss. Like right there, you can hear a little bit of a shift as it goes through that edit. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to make sure everything is deselected in my timeline. I'm going to hit my slash above my enter key. And if there is something, say something like this is selected here, I'm going to do control shift A or command shift A on a Mac and it deselects everything in the timeline. And now I'm going to land on that edit. And why I'm going to do that, I'm pressing plus and minus to zoom up and zoom out on my timeline, by the way. But I'm going to hit arrow up, which will jump to the edit to the left. Arrow down will jump to the edits to the right. And I'm going to hit Control Shift D, Command Shift D on a Mac, and it adds a uh, crossfade here. And the crossfade will fade one clip out while fading the other one in, and do it simultaneously so it sounds nice and smooth. Let's listen to this. Sorry for your loss. And that sounds a lot better. Very smooth going from one clip to the next. So I'm going to go down here and try out the same one here, see if this sounds the same. And you hear a little bit of a shift there, so I'm going to arrow up, Control Shift D. Let's play through that. And if you have a little bit too many, too many, if you have a little too much handles on this, sometimes you'll hear bleeding uh, from the other clip, and you can just simply change the the length of this uh, cross dissolve if you're getting uh, kind of duplicate sounds going across the the edit. But I'm going to arrow down here, land on that edit, and listen to it. And I do that's not as that's a little more subtle, but I do. I'm going to add a cross dissolve on there as well, or a cross fade. Play through it. And that sounds good. And I'm going to continue to do this. You don't have to add it on everything, just where you know where it is very noticeable. Uh, but on this one with that background noise, since we're shooting in somebody's home with something going on in the background, uh, it looks like I need it on pretty much all these edits here. That sounds good. And one more. Right there on the last edit, Control-Shift-D. Play through it. Thank you. And that sounds pretty good. Okay, so now that I've got this smoothed out, let's go through so a little bit of cleanup work here. I'm going to move over to the first clip. I'm going to select this one here. All right, on this first clip here, as we play through it, you can hear an awful lot of background noise. And there, if you have some items in here that you can, will, it will help you to clean up a little bit. The thing I don't like about the repair here, this reduced noise is what's called. Um, this reduced noise is one that analyzes as it goes and it tries to it, uh, tries to reduce the noise real time. So you'll still hear a little bit of noise and then it reduces really nicely. But then it comes back every now and then. So it's it's uh, it's an adaptive uh, noise reduction uh, filter. It's also things like reduced rumble if you're getting some bassy noises and some de hum if you're getting like little buzzes and hums in your audio. Uh, with this, I'm not going to be working too much with the repair audio because there's one down here that I like a little bit more especially for dialogue it is clarity and uh, as I select clarity here as I move down through we've got a little EQ section uh, you can also do some voice enhanced things that brings out the lower frequencies and kills all the other frequencies for male and to end uh, and will keep the uh, frequencies uh, the higher frequencies of females as well we can turn this on and check mark male and listen to it We'll be finished here very soon, Mr. Parker. And it makes it just a little bit, brings out those frequencies, makes that voice just a little bit more bold. Uh, I'm also going to hit EQ here under our clarity, and I'm going to change this one to vocal presence. We're going to bring out the voice, and it will also help to kill some of the other frequencies, and it will clean this up a little bit. And you'll notice it's getting rid of kind of this lower frequency and boosting up the frequency where human voice hits there. So let's listen to it. We'll be finished here very soon, Mr. Parker. Uh, I'm very sorry for your loss. And that sounds really good. It brings his voice out uh, quite a bit. Now we have a really bold voice, and we're concentrating more on the voice than we are at the, the noise in the background. And one other thing here, I'm going to scroll down, 
and I'm going to find uh, this little creative tab. And I always like to add a little bit of reverb because it adds uh, a little bit more natural uh, sounding voice because in the location, depending on where you're at, if you're in a room, if you're in a, in a concert hall, if you're somewhere, if you, even if you're outside, you're going to have a little bit of reverb, a little bit of echo on your voice here. So I'm going to check mark that turn that on and I'm going to look at the different types here we have auditorium church we don't want those large reflective room uh, small dry room uh, I'm going to say a warm room here and we'll have a little bit of reverb to his voice there we'll be finished here very soon Mr. Parker uh, I'm very sorry for and that sounds a little too echoey for that room so I'm going to try a small dry room and see what we get we'll be finished here very soon Mr. Parker and now there's a mild echo to it, a mild reverb, and that sounds a little bit more natural, so I really like that. Uh, I'm very sorry for your loss. Now what you'll notice here is as I've got this clip selected, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to uh, the effects controls. I'm going to hit this little double arrow here and tell it to show me the effect controls panel. And this shows all the effects that's been added onto that audio clip uh, because of changes that I've been doing over here. Here are the uh, effects that it's been, been adding onto the effects control here. If I tilt it over that, you'll see we've got dynamic processing, graphic equalizer, a whole bunch of kind of different things that have been done uh, that, that enhanced our audio. So I'm going to tilt it again, go back to here. So I'm going to select this clip here. I want to copy those uh, items that I just did with uh, clarity and creative I didn't do any repair so I'm just going to do clarity and uh, creative and I'm going to copy and paste those to these other clips so what you do that is I select this track right here do control C to copy now I can select all these other audio tracks and I can right click on one of them and say paste attributes now I'm going to tell you exactly what I want it to paste I'm not doing any sort of video so I've got these unchecked here and I'm uh, going to go down to uh, my audio attributes and I'm going to uh, paste effects but I'm going to uncheck loudness, repair, and clip volume and I'm just going to paste the clarity and creative uh, attributes that I um, changed on that first clip and hit OK and now it's added it to all these clips here and now as I play through I'm very sorry for your loss oh, thank you Valerie had been sick for a long time I'm I'm just glad she's finally at rest. I guess that's the way to look at things. Still, it must have been hard to wake up and... Okay, and that sounds pretty good. So the voice is nice and clear throughout. We've cleaned it up. We've got the levels adjusted. And now probably my only last step is I'm going to find some room tone. I'm going to go online. I'm going to go to freesound.org, and I'm going to. And if you have an account on that, like I mentioned in the previous episode, uh, you can search sound effects and find room tone. You can find uh, outside noises like cars driving. Uh, I'm going to find a few of those on freesound.org, and I'm going to download them as waves. And I'm going to come back and import them, and we're going to show you the next step. All right, I'm back and I've uh, imported a couple uh, items here. I've got room tone and I've got street noise that I've d done. Um, this is a very simple scene where they're sitting inside of a room, so I want to probably add a little bit of room tone to it. And then I also want to add some street noise because you probably hear some natural sounds from outside. So first of all, I'm going to start with my room tone here. I'm going to double click on it and play it. And you hear that room in there. It's just kind of that room, room hiss or hum in there. So I'm going to just uh, go to the beginning of it. So what I'm going to do is do a three-point edit. I'm going to go to the beginning of this clip and put uh, I for end point. And I put, I'm going to do a three-point edit. I've got one point up here. I'm going to do shift three to jump to my timeline, hit home, put I for end point, end, and O for out point. And I've got uh, an end point, an end point and out point. And this clip is longer than my uh, scene is. It's just going to fill it in from beginning to end here. And let's, let's find that. And let's find out here. I'm going to change my source patching to track two. Hit period to drop it in. And it is long enough. It's longer than the than the timeline. So it uh, it started the end point. It uh, dropped it in up to this point right here. Now I'm going to also add some street noise here. Let me move that up a little bit so we can see a little bit better here. I'm going to go to track three, double click on the street noise, and I'm going to find a part where I want this to start. Maybe right there before the car is driving by. I'm going to do in point, go down to my timeline, shift three, hit home, I for in point, end, and hit O for out point, and drop that. Then I put this on uh, track three there and dropped it in. All right, now so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to select my room tone and I'm going to go up to uh, my essential panel here and I'm going to add make this ambience. And I covered this in the previous episode, but a couple things that I'm going to do here is uh, add a little reverb, and I'm going to change this to uh, room ambience there. Adds just a little bit of reverb to it, makes it sound a little more natural. And then I'm going to select the, the bottom track here, and I'm going to make that also 
ambient noise. And I'm going to add a little bit of outside. That's going to be outside ambience. So I'm going to check mark that and let add a little amb outside ambience. So let's play through this and listen. The street noise is way too loud, so I'm going to mute that right now and just listen to my room tone. Here's without. There's with. We'll be finished here very soon, Mr. Parker. So it's very subtle, but I'm going to hit G for gain. I'm going to gain it by about like uh, maybe uh, uh, three decibels. Let's hear it. Parker. Uh, let's go to back to the beginning. Mute. So without. Oh, and I like that. I kind of brought it up a little, brought up a little bit of level to it there. Uh, but just, to, just for some exaggeration, let's hit G for gain and add it by two more decibels. And now we've got that room tone throughout. Let's work on the street noise now. And I kind of don't like that car passing by, so what I'm going to do is hit my, I'm going to hit my slip tool, which is Y, and I'm going to grab this and drag it over, which is going to drag this audio over to the left. And now it got rid of it. Now it's over here, but I got a little bit at the end as well. Let's drag it to the right a little bit. Uh, I might have to cut some of that off at the end, but let's, let's listen to that, or I could duplicate this. Let's listen to it and see what it sounds like with the street noise outside. So I'll have it muted and play and unmute. And you just hear kind of a subtle street noise outside that kind of brings a little bit of life to this now. Let's play through it. We'll be finished here very soon, Mr. Parker. Uh, I'm very sorry for your loss. Oh, thank you. Valerie had been sick for a long time. I'm, I'm just glad she's finally at rest. I guess that's the way to look at things. Okay, I really like that. Now it's like really starting to sound good. I'm going to go toward the end here because it looks like it cranks up at the end. Maybe has a car passing by. Let's see if it sounds, sounds good or bad. Sounds like a dump truck pulling up in their driveway. So we could, I, I kind of like the sound of a car outside, but I'm just gonna grab this here and we're gonna turn it down as that truck kind of drives and see what we get. Maybe it's good, maybe it's not, let's listen to it. I like that, but just a little quieter outside. It almost sounds like the ambulance driving away after they take the body out to the ambulance there or whatever they take it out in. So anyway, uh, so that's a basic rundown on using the essential panel to kind of clean up your dialogue inside of Premiere. If you have any questions, post them and thanks for watching. We'll be finished here very soon, Mr. Parker. Uh, I'm very sorry for your loss. Thank you. Valerie had been sick for a long time. I'm, I'm just glad she's finally at rest. I guess that's the way to look at things. Still, it must have been hard to wake up and... Yeah. Yeah. Well, again, we're just about done here. Let us know if there's anything we can do for you. Thank you, Detective.